consultation Will this one end in bed? Or will Mistress Allen slap him round the head? Ah, good day, Mistress Allen. What brings you this day? Oh, dear lady, you tremble like a leaf on an autumn day. Aye, for I'm most affrighted. But Mr. Allen says he thinks I worry over naught. So I am come to you, for methinks you would... Perchance you may help me. By my troth, I... Uh, pray tell me of this evil that have frightened you, madam, and I shall do all in my power to protect you from it. Yes, evil. Oh, indeed, tis the very word for it. I have seen a dark figure prowling outside our house in the night, and once he... I saw him spying through my window. Who is he? What does he want from me? What am I to do? I see. Uh, uh, and you do not recognize his face or any other particulars? The color of his hair, for instance? Oh, nay, for tis always so dark. But by his silhouette I can tell he is a bony, scrawny little man. Is he verily? Uh, but your husband thinks tis naught to worry over, you say? Aye, he says the man is doubtless naught but a poor travelling tinker who is merely taking shelter in our garden. Twould explain why his figure is so slight, to be sure, but, but, but what if he is not a tinker? What if his purpose is more sinister? Aye, indeed. Then let us consult the stars. Who is the man prowling outside the Allen's house in the night, and what is his purpose? The star suggests the prowler is a secret foe of your husband. Does Mr. Allen have any gambling debts, perchance? Old? Methinks I see it now. Ah! Oh, tis you! The prowler, tis you! Me? <laughs> uh, how now, madam? What an outlandish notion! So you would deny it? That you have prowled and spied upon me these last months? Prithee, Avis, you've got it all... I will not have it! I am not a thing to be owned. I'm not one of your your prized possessions. I prithee, madam, put that down. Put it. Ah! Fine, madam. That was a priceless, a priceless Venetian vase. Man who has earned such a claim, lately returned from his conquests in Spain. The her streets of London resound with his fame. Rot and boots, stripper, or boots, but it is his name. Good day, sir. How may I? By Jupiter! Can it be true? Robert Devereux, the Earl of Essex, Lord of Her Majesty's Privy Council, a hero of the Battle of Cadiz. Prithee, calm yourself, Sarah. Pray, treat me just as you would any other querent. Of course, as it pleases your lordship. Uh, but may I say, what a great privilege it is to... Uh, may I offer you a... Uh... You are the man who had some success treating the plague some years past, are you not? Oh, indeed, my lord. You are very well informed. 
my strong water did save many a Londoner from a most lamentable death. Then perchance you might have some cunning cure for me as well. For since I am returned to England upon having resolved that small matter in Spain, I find myself afflicted with the most vexing ailment. Oh, but your most glorious capture of the Spanish city of Cadiz was no small matter, my lord. All England talks of nothing else. Why, pamphlets recounting your heroic exploits are sold on every street corner in London. Mayhap they are. I know nothing of them. My single-handed victory against the King of Spain was but a trifling affair, and the least I could do for my Queen and a grateful nation. But I fear vast riches in the hearts of many a Spanish beauty were not the only things I did capture while I was there. Uh, what else did you capture in Spain, my lord? I fear I do not grasp your meaning. If you would kindly show me where upon your body you are... Ah... As you see, this Spanish disease I caught has me oozing a most disagreeable substance. Hmm. Methinks I have a fair idea of the nature of your affliction. Uh, but I must confirm the judgment with a reading of the stars. Uh, let us see. What disease troubles Robert Lord Devereux, the Earl of Essex? have gonorrhea, my lord. It is a condition provoked by an increase in intimate activities. Too much strumpy humpy, eh? Well, tis true that since news of my victory got about, every wench from Southwark to Shoreditch wants a piece of my action, as it were. And how may this gonorrhea be cured? The most effective method is lead plate therapy. Usually this requires a man to lie in bed for many hours with a leaden plate positioned upon his privy parts, thus allowing the lead to impart its healing properties to the affected member. But, of course, men such as your lordship have no time to lie around in bed, which is why... Let me just fetch it from my cabinet. Which is why I invented this. And that is what? Some sort of wonder job? Like the ones old men used to wear? Precisely so, my lord. It is a codpiece that I had a blacksmith fashion out of lead. I invite your lordship to wear it under your breeches so that the lead may remain in contact with your privy member at all times. Indeed, until you are cured. Ha <laughs> ha! How very droll this is. Verily, how old-fashioned. I will appear as hung as old King Henry Tudor. Hmm. Mayhap I just wear it in my chambers. Good day, and please come again. If you need anything, anything at all, I am at your service. Watch another is watch a night and day. If a woman has your heart, you cannot let her stray. Ah, Avis, I did not expect to see you this evening. Do you bring news? Aye, some very good news. At least if you confirm it for me. Methinks I am with child. Ah, oh, how... how very wondrous. And, uh... Have you any idea of who might... I verily, with child, but I dare not to. Forsooth, what if it be naught but false hope? Then let us ask the stars without delay. Is Mistress Avis Allen verily with child?
I'm sorry to tell you, Havis. You are not with child this time. May! Verily! I am feared so. But why? Why are you so plump at present? Well, you're not as young as you once were, but with a trifle more exertion around the house. And... First you tell me I'm not with child, and then... and then you call me a plump, lazy old woman! Tis not I, tis the stars! I have no control over... Oh, how could you speak such... Oh, why must you insult me so? What new imagined sin did I commit that you would punish me for now? By my troth, t'was never my intention to insult you, Avis. But I see I have vexed you. Pray forgive me, Avis. Fret not, Simon. In truth, I, I know you mean no harm. Methinks tis only... Tis that such disappointment is hard to bear. I did so wish it to be true. That you and I were to have a child. Rich but not satisfied, mayhap you have not tried this one weird trick for displaying your wealth By herbs and confections to boost your complexion and pass idle hours tending to your health Good even, sir. Who do I have the pleasure of welcoming to my chambers this day? Nicholas Muggs, sir. Proprietor of Muggs Rugs down on Silver Street. Ah, the wig makers. Uh, you supply wigs to players, do you not? I have heard tell of your fine work from some of my playhouse querents. I thank you for your kindness, sir. I do hear you are very skilled at your trade also. For are you not the curer of the plague of 92? Forsooth, I do hope you may cure me as well. For though I do not think I have the plague, whatever I have is doubtless most grave. No matter what my wife thinks. And what is it your wife thinks? It be her mind that I have taken naught but a chilly cold in the head. But tis not so, Dr. Foreman, for I ache all over. My throat is grown sore, and I cough day and night. Day and night, you say? Aye, verily. <coughs> I see. Then let us consult the stars. What does ail Nicholas Mug? I'm sorry to confirm that your condition is indeed most grave. Oh, most grave, you say? I am afeard so, for it seems you have been stricken with a bout of hypochondria. Tis a disease of the mind that provokes delusions of illness in the sufferer, whilst he is, in truth, in a state of perfect health. My chart indicates that in your case it is so severe it may one day prove fatal. Hypoch... what is it that you call it? Hmm. I must own, sir, that though I understand little of what you say, by your tone methinks you do trifle with me. And to think that folks say you be different from other doctors. Well, sir, I will not tarry, for I see I do waste my time here. Robert Lord Devereux a rising from a rising star Dashing and debonair, he will go far. Oh, London greets him with cries of huzzah. In truth, he cannot stand to his friends, but we are, we are. Good day, my lord. How may I do you service? 
Would it pertain to some thrilling adventure upon which you may soon be embarking? Indeed it does. Sir Walter Raleigh and I did recently come across some intelligence concerning a fleet of Spanish ships that will soon be sailing home from the New World, bearing a goodly cargo of gold. Raleigh and I plan to borrow the Royal Fleet, which we will use to intercept the ships and seize the treasure. Huzzah! But, uh, borrow the Royal Navy, you say? Aye. Only temporarily, of course. The Queen will hardly know her ships are gone. Indeed, when we return them to her, bearing a handsome prize of Spanish gold, she will doubtless forgive our failure to file the correct paperwork and what not. Ah, uh, doubtless. And how may I assist your lordship in this glorious endeavour? Well, in order to intercept the Spanish fleet, we must know which route it is planning to take. One possibility is that it returns to Spain, having retrieved the gold from the New World's southern continent. The other possibility, and this is the one Sir Walter thinks most likely, is that the gold has already been transported by conquistadors from the southern continent up to Havana, and the ships are to fetch it from there. Ah, then let us see whether the stars can tell us upon which route the treasure ships may be intercepted on their return to Spain from the New World. Will they be sailing from the southern continent, or from the Spanish colony of Havana? The Spanish treasure ships will take a direct route back from the southern continent, from whence the gold was, uh, found. For it seems the treasure was, well, discovered by the fleet's own soldiers. Excellent, excellent. But where are we to intercept them? Pray, give me the precise day, latitude and longitude. Uh, certainly, my lord. Uh, but divining nautical coordinates is a somewhat lengthy and complex process. If your lordship would kindly return in an hour or so... Quickly, sir! Or... I have not the time to bide here all day. Ah, uh, well, well then, uh, let me see now. Uh, taking into account the position of Jupiter, uh, divide by three, carry the one. Ah, uh, yes. The Spanish treasure ships may be intercepted upon the 15th day of October at a latitude of 9 and 40 degrees north and 5 and 20 degrees west, or thereabouts. That said, however, I cannot promise you that... Excellent. Raleigh and I shall sail to this very spot. Huzzah! Huzzah! Godspeed, my lord! She never went to school, and she's kind and never cruel. Do not take Alice for a fool. Alice Black, she is no fool. Good evening to you, madam. How might I? I pray go tell your master, Mr. Foreman, that Mistress Alice Blag is come to see him. Ah, Mistress Blag. It is I, Dr. Simon Foreman, at your service. And what an honour it is to welcome the wife of the Dean of Rochester to my humble practice. To whom do I owe my thanks for having recommended you to my care? Well, I will not lie. You owe your thanks to nobody. For folk do tell me that you are not a real doctor, but a quack, who does conjure demons and dabbles most unlawfully in the dark arts. Uh, I do assure you, madam, that whatever you may have heard... I am nay, a... Nay, do not quibble, sir. If I did seek the counsel of a doctor who has one of those fancy medical degrees, of the kind of high-bred know-it-all who does see fit to judge a woman and vex her most cruelly, I would have gone elsewhere. But, truth be told, I have need of such a man as you, for I have been bewitched by a witch. 
Ah, I see. Yea, a loathsome spell has been cast upon me. It does cause me to awaken in the morning with a most terrible pain in my head. A pain so wretched it does have me chundering into my chamber pot. Pain in the head and involuntary purging. And what leads you to believe your suffering is occasioned by witchcraft? Well, the timing is most unnatural. My troubles do occur every Saturday morning without fail. I suspect the doings of our new neighbour, the Widow Macdoon. As well as being Scottish, she does possess several cats. Several cats, you say? Mm. Uh, one or two of which I may have kicked. And now she has seen fit to take revenge upon me with her dark, foreign magic. Indeed. Scotland is well known for the powerful black witchcraft practiced by its womenfolk. But as compelling as this evidence may be, my practice does draw upon the latest scientifical arts. To diagnose your condition, I must first perform a rigorous astronomical analysis. So, let us see now, what do the stars say is the cause of your Saturday morning suffering? Rejoice, Mistress Blag. There is the happiest of reasons for your morning chunderings. You are with child. As for the timing of your affliction, uh, is it not well known that children do love to rise early on Saturday mornings for the purpose of tormenting their parents? <laughs> it would seem that your child is particularly precocious, for he has begun his caprices from within the womb. <laughs> I am with child. By the saints, what joyous tidings! I will go now to tell my husband, Blag. This night we shall empty the Blag family wine cellar in celebration! Beware conspirations, plots and machinations The schemes of big physics to sell you their wares Their cures to us violent, but they call it science They mock our beliefs and belittle our fears Ah, well met, Mr. Mug. You seem displeased following our last consultation. In truth, I am surprised to see you again. Doubtless you are. You were very wrong to tell me I had... What was it again? Hyperdiarrhea or some such? Hypochondria, as I recall. But, yea, I am come again, for it seems you have won the heart of my wife, and she will not hear of me seeing any other doctor henceforth. Ah, verily. Your wife's endorsement does me honour, sir. So, what brings you this day? For in sooth you look most well. Well? Mayhap I look well now, but twill not be for long. I have been poisoned. Poisoned? By the saints! Now, who is the author of this foul deed? My friend George Sprottle, the bookbinder. I did dine with him not two hours ago. Ah, I see. A bout of evil digestion. Pray tell, was there turned meat or some such at table? Nay, not meat. Twas a pie full of cherries. I had a bite of it afore I knew what I was eating. Ah, uh, cherries, you say? Aye, cherries. And this after I took particular care to give Mistress Sprottle a list of foods I must not eat. I added cherries to the list when I did hear that the Countess of Devonshire has declared against their noxious qualities. The Countess of Devonshire, you say? Noxious qualities, indeed. And now your symptoms, Mr. Mug. Had you any reaction after eating these cherries? 
My reaction? Well, I reacted as any man would. I spat them out. I know you what Mr. Spottle did then, Dr. Foreman. Nay, but pray tell. He did laugh at me. He even called me a dinner-ralphing fusspot. Fie, I may soon be in the grave, thanks to George. Will he still be laughing then? Well, let us not speculate, shall we, Mr. Mug? Now, let us see what these stars may tell us. What ails Nicholas Mug? Your condition has been provoked by the rancour you feel toward your host for having ignored your alimentary demands. These feelings have caused your spleen to produce ill humours, which you are presently venting in the form of bilious anger. Hence it will quickly pass. I see. But what of the cherries I ate? Cherries are perfectly safe to eat. Uh, truly, Mr. Mug, you must abandon these absurd and superstitious notions about the evils of particular fruits and vegetables. Ah, uh, must I? Aye. Uh, with the exception of onions, of course. For onions do render a man susceptible to the plague. Onions, verily. I thank you for the warning, Dr. Foreman. I shall add onions to my list. There you are. Uh, did Mistress Allen call whilst I was out this day? Nay, you're quite sure about that, are you? Oh, I see. <sighs> I cannot understand it. Why has Avis not come these past weeks? Does she no longer wish to see me? So, tis the madness of my love that keeps Avis away. My jealous passions and accusations of vexed her may have even caused her fright. When she comes to see me again, for she surely will, by and by, I must remember to be kinder to her, to not plague her with my suspicions. And until Avis does return, well, there are other women in the world, are there not?
Good day, Mistress Lanier. Much time has passed since I last saw you. How do you fare? In truth, not well, Dr. Foreman. Not well at all. Then I am full sorry for it, madam. Pray, tell me, what manner of ill has befallen you? I have been publicly humiliated. Mr. S has been circulating a collection of insulting sonnets about an unnamed dark lady, and all of London thinks this dark lady is me. Well, your complexion is rather... Uh, that is to I say... am described as having foul breath and black wires for hair. Though me thinks the very worst line is the one that tells of a gross body rising at the utterance of my name. And I cannot abide illusions, Dr. Foreman. If Mr. S wishes to reference bodily levitation and other such cheap stage magic, he would do well to leave my name out of it. My interest is in the dramatic arts, not fairground attractions. I am not sure that is quite his meaning. Dr. Foreman, you know of Mr. William Shakespeare, then? Do not tell me you have read the sonnets. Well, I... I own that I have. But as you did remark, madam, all of London has read them. Oh, well, I am undone. My professional reputation is now utterly spoiled, for now the whole world will look upon me as naught but Mr. Shakespeare's fancy wench. No longer will they judge me on my own merits. Let us hope it is not as grave as that, madam. Have you discoursed upon the matter with him? Nay, I dare not confront him about it. For we are almost at an end with our work on a play, and I dare not risk it not being staged. Hmm. Then let us see what the stars advise. What may Mistress Lanier do to restore her professional reputation? You are right to be concerned about the damage to your reputation, Mistress Lanier, for there is a danger that your partnership with Mr. Shakespeare and his depiction of you in his sonnets will forever overshadow your own literary achievements. God's womb! But what can I do to forestall such an injustice? I suggest you spread a rumour of your own about another lady. For instance, there is a brothel owner in Clerkenwell they call Black Luce, if you were to put it about that she is the subject of Shakespeare's sonnets, twould do her reputation no harm. Indeed, the effect would be quite the reverse, for doubtless there be many a man at present who would pay handsomely for a tumble with Shakespeare's dark lady. Mm, well, indeed. I do feel it is most important to advance the interests of my fellow women, especially those seeking to make their way in business. Oh, do you see that, Dr. Foreman? "'Tis your mute Italian querent, Signor Ferraro. "'He is staring at us through the window.' "'Is he? Ah, then doubtless he has come for another consultation.' Ferrara, 